All right, so hey there, uh, welcome back. So not too much to talk about today. We are gonna fix a couple issues. First of all, our character was walking really fast diagonally. We're gonna make that diagonal movement a little more appropriate. We're also gonna fix uh, some state machine issues. There was an issue with the attack boxes being a little wonky. And so we're gonna fix one of those issues. And then we're gonna fix kind of our state machine, go a little more in depth and do exactly what a state machine is. So, uh, Welcome back, and let's get started. Alright, so here's where we left off. We have a few issues we need to fix here really quickly. Uh, first of all, last time I made reference to a state machine that I never actually made with you guys. I made that off camera, so we need to talk about state machines for a little bit. Second, um, Right now, if I move diagonally, you can see that the character is actually moving twice as fast. If I had, like let's say I have two characters here, one that's moving straight horizontal and one that's moving diagonally, the one that's moving diagonally would be at the same place as the horizontal character, which means they're actually moving faster. So we're gonna address that today as well. And yeah, let's, uh, let's dive into it here. So the very first thing I want to do is open up my player movement script. And I don't have Visual Studio open, so it's going to take me a minute to do that. And I'll meet you right back here. All right, so I don't like doing this. I would rather just write all the code live, but I'm going to explain what a state is here first. So in our player movement code, underneath the using statements, but before our class is actually defined, you can add it looks essentially like another class, and I'm calling this a public enum player state. And at the moment, I have three different states. I have walk, attack, and interact. And those three states um, are what I currently have planned for my player. Now, you can add a bunch more states. You could have a state for like a dash attack, like Link does. You can have a state for uh, dying, for being in a shop, like whatever you might need to do. Think of an enum like a boolean that has extra values. So a boolean is something that's either true or false. Never both, but only ever one of those two things. An enum, instead of just having two states, it has as many states as you want it to. So you can have it be walk, attack, interact, dash, whatever. And then you can make it so that your code only accesses specific parts of it based on where that state is. So we've got our public enum player state like I said, I'd like to write this live, but I had already done this and I already showed it off in a previous video. So I think it's okay if I just ask you guys to follow along. So public enum player state, walk, attack, interact. Um, all right, and then we need to make a reference to that state inside the script itself, just like we would any other variable. So in this case, our state is gonna be called current state. So we're making a public player state as if we're referencing another class we're going to call that current state. Now, when we start out, I'm going to set my current state to walk. I'm going to do a couple other things here too, really quickly. So if I pop back into Unity, I want to show something left over from last time that was brought up in the comments. Um, if I hit play, I'm going to expand my player a little bit. There's another lingering issue we're going to fix. So if I expand my player, you can see my four hitboxes there. If I attack, before I've moved, do you see how all four of these hitboxes turn on? That's because right now it's registering everything is on because I haven't actually moved yet, which means I haven't stored any values in the animator for uh, where the character is. Let's go to the players. So right now, when I attack, it knows to be an attacking, but it doesn't know which of the four attack states to do. So. The animation is there for attacking down, but all four boxes are turning on. So um, let's fix that really quickly here. Oh, sorry. I forgot to show you one more thing here. If I attack while I'm uh, stationary, all four boxes, but if I move just a little bit, correct box. So we're going to fix that. Uh, in the start method, what I want to do, since I want my player facing down when my game starts, uh, I'm just going to set in my animator after I complete my reference to my animator, I'm just going to set my uh, move x and move y to the appropriate uh, values. So 
uh, in my start method, I'm going to say animator uh, dot set float. And the float I want to set is move x. Is that what I called it? Capital M or was it lowercase m? Lowercase m. I always second guess myself. So move x, and I want to set that value to 1. And then, oh, no, not 1, 0, because I want to point down. And then I want to set uh, animator.set float move move y and I want to set that to negative one for down. All right, I'm going to save my script really fast. Uh, if I pop back into Unity here, it should fix that issue with the boxes. So let's hit play. And it's going to think for a second. Okay. I'm always so impatient. I never want to wait for it to compile. There we go. See, just the right box because we're setting that directly in our start method. All right, cool. So that's the first thing we want to fix. Second thing we want to fix is that uh, super fast movement. So in my update animation and move, uh, we're going to say, actually, before we do that, in update. So what I'm doing is in my update, I'm resetting my change to zero, which is setting my x to horizontal, my y to vertical. And then uh, if we're in the walk state, I'm allowing myself to move. And then I had thought that by using move rigid body dot move position, I had thought that it already um, already normalized that vector to make it so that it's not longer than it should be. It doesn't. So in move character, before I call rigid body dot move position, I'm going to do just change dot normalized. So, oh, do I have to do change equals change dot normalized? Is that what I have to do? I want to try it one more time. Oh, normalize. That's why. Uh, okay, cool. So change dot normalize. Now, if I go back into here, um, let's try this out now. My diagonal walking skills should be significantly slower. Should be better. Should be more what diagonal walking should be. But let's find out. There we go. That's much better. It's not ridiculously fast. Uh, OK, cool. Now, let's see. Let's talk about that state machine just a tiny bit more here. So we're going to start our current state. And then our current state is going to be walk. And then whenever we press the attack button, if our current state is walk, or sorry, and our current state is not attack, so in this case being walk, we're going to start the attack coroutine. And the attack coroutine sets our state to attack, waits one frame, sets attacking to false, waits 0.3 seconds, which is the length of that animation, and then sets our state back to walk. Um, if our current state is walk, then it does the update animation and move, which is what causes that. Uh, if I go back in here, uh, there's a little pause when you attack. And it's not. 100% true to OG Zelda, but it's pretty darn true. So, all right, cool. Um, I think that's all I needed to cover as far as the state machine went, just to make sure that we were all on the same page. So, again, just to go over it here, enum, set up the states, create an instance of that enum, and have it, or give it a name local to the script, then we're going to set that right away in the state in the start method. Then in the update method, we're only going to access certain bits of code. So we're only accessing this if we press the attack button and we're not in the attack state already. And then we're only accessing this bit of code if we're in the walk state. So yeah, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the description down below. Uh, otherwise, you can uh, follow me on Twitter if I don't write posting videos. You can join my Discord. I'm chatting pretty much every day. Uh, if you learned something new, feel free to give me a like and enjoy yourself. Have yourselves a wonderful day.